to the land again. Um, this presentation was supposed to, uh, to be done by uh, my colleague in Celsa, Frank Cardona, but uh, unfortunately he had to cancel the TV yesterday because he had, uh, well, his wife had a baby. So uh, don't worry about, about that because Frank is, uh, for Frank, is baby number five. So uh, it's like uh, going to a cinema or something like that. Yeah? So we all right. Okay, let's uh, try to start. Um, again, um, apologies because the presentation is not done by me, so sometimes to do a presentation and to have prepared is a, a bit tricky, but uh, I'll try to do my best on that. This is uh, the topics of the presentation. Uh, the first topic is uh, to understand what is happening in the construction sector. Then we will go to uh, the market of steel and lung products and we will analyze consumption. Then we will focus on the rebar market. We will continue with the international price situation. And we will try to uh, wrap up everything and make a summary and an outlook. Okay, in terms of, uh, of uh, construction sector, well, what we can say is that uh, Overall, there are factors that they are telling us that uh, construction uh, sector will stay uh, or will keep growing in the next coming years. One factor is that uh, global urbanization, so that this is people going from uh, from uh, countryside to the cities, is uh, increasing and is going to reach like almost 60% in 2030, uh, being 52%. Uh, in 2011. Uh, and the uh, population living in urban areas is projected to gain 1.35 billion people. And I think we're uh, going from 3.6 uh, billion in 2011 to f almost 5 billion in 2030. So there's a guarantee of people moving, so flats, infrastructure, roads, all, the thing, uh, all these uh, things will need to be built. And on, on, uh, as a result of that, global construction is expected, expected to rise by 6.3 trillion or over 70% in 2000 and, uh, to 2000, uh, 2025, uh, with uh, almost 60% of uh, this uh, global growth in construction uh, concentrated in three countries. First one, China, then India, and also the United States. While Europe will remain 5% smaller by 2025 and then in 2007. So, and also global residential construction is expected to grow about 4% in, in the period 2013 and 2000, the two 2018. And we talk about European construction activity is expected to grow 2.3% per annum in this period. So as a, a global, globally construction that is obviously is always a, 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 probably the biggest factor, the biggest industry pulling off our products is going to be uh, healthy and growing in the next coming years. What is going to happen then in as a consequence, what is going to happen in the, in the steel and iron consumption in the next year or so? Well, this is uh, the past and uh, the past and the forecast on what is happening in terms of uh, global steel consumption. But we agree in 2013 uh, to a level of uh, on a level of 3.1%, confirming sustained growth, and it is a fact that industrial consumption is uh, sustainably going up. And again, we expect to grow another 3% in 2014 and also in 2015. So that at the end of uh, 2014, steel consumption as a whole is uh, forecasted to will uh, go a little bit over 1.5 billion tons. Uh, we can see here, well, obviously, uh, that's uh, 
a figure that uh, uh, is uh, easy to maintain in your head because half of that is in China. About 720 million tons are consumed in China. In terms of long products also, we are expecting the market going up and it's been growing again consistently since 2008 and uh, to go up to uh, expected 846 um, million in 2014 coming from 818 million in 2013. In terms of speed by, speed by area, well, as a constant, as a, a constant uh, barrel in the last years, uh, Asian markets are accounting for more than 70% of total uh, product consumption. And uh, as a the market there, they, are, they keep healthy, they uh, are still driving the consumption, the volumes of long products up. And we see that yeah, in the forecast in 2014 for this area is expected to go almost um, more than yeah 15 percent up. No, sorry, about uh, five five percent up. Yeah. Let's try to analyze what is happening in terms of long products by region. I would say, as a total, as I said, uh, um, healthy growth of 3.4%. Uh, the strongest performance is going to be uh, during, this, uh, during this year in terms of forecast of growth in North America. And what we have seen comments on North American market uh, really uh, in terms of economy going well and the market going well. So North America is going to grow by 5.7%. Next, it's, uh, it's going to be European Union after uh, many, many years of, uh, of uh, uh, market going down. And it's true that from a very low level, or for, from a very low level, but the market in Europe is going to start growing again, 5.2%. Eastern, uh, Eastern Southeast Asia, 3.5%. The negative uh, outlook is down here for uh, CIS, um, Russia, and other markets in EU and Turkey, minus 0 0.8, and the rest of the world, 3.4%. In terms of uh, Spring by product here, what we see is that the one that is pushing, is pushing or is gaining share in this long product is uh, reinforcing bars. Accounting for almost half of us, 43% of total long product consumption. About 27% mentioned by 24 sections, 6%. from Rewars. Rewars, again, in terms of uh, what is expected this year, the increase, uh, the, the top increase is expected in North America. As, uh, as uh, mentioned, the market is, uh, is there um, developing uh, at, a good, at a good speed, so 7.8% 7, 7 in terms of the increase of consumption in North America. In the Union, again, going back up from low levels, 5.9%. Eastern South in Eastern Asia still growing very strongly, 6.7%, uh, in spite of all the problems happening in China in terms of uh, probably real estate and construction industry um, uh, slowing down. CIS, other European countries and Turkey, 2.7% and the rest of the world, 1.3% for a total of 5.3%. Sections, not surprisingly, what is expected is, uh, because here you know that, uh, well, it's uh, 
the, the, the key markets for sections are always uh, markets like uh, USA or even uh, United Kingdom, but at the same time it appears that sections are gaining traction in uh, markets of East and Southeast Asia and the rest of the world, growing 7.2% and 10.4%. Uh, in the case of America is going to stay uh, growing robustly, 5.2%, European Union 4.7%, and the decrease is going to be in CAS or the European and Turkey. This is uh, more related, maybe not as much, or let's say, um, influenced as well by, by manufacturing. So uh, the growth is going to be strong here in North America, 6%. European Union 4.9 percent, uh, very um, uh, slight growth in Asia and rest of the world, and a decrease in CAS and other European. And why, why about that? This is more clearly related to industry behavior. That. Um, it's going to grow 3.6% in European Union. Uh, industry in, in European Union has kept a very uh, steady um, growth during the, all the, 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 recession, the recession period. And it's still there, North America, 3.1%, just reflecting the good uh, performance of the economy. East, that's a relation 2.6%. CAS, of the European and Turkey, 2.9%. In the rest of the world, 3.3% and a total of 2%. Okay, let's uh, just a couple of slides on the uh, rebound market. And in terms of uh, growth, we can say that by regions, developing economies are driving or reinforcing bus consumption with China accounting for even a bit more than a half of that, 50% of the consumption, 55% sorry, of the consumption. One of the, one of the issues that we have been discussing the, uh, today is that one of the problems that the industry is facing is overcapacity and here we have a, a picture on what is happening in different areas of the world. The only one that I don't think is because simply uh, Frank probably could not get the right information. The one that I don't think is right is, um, is um, the Chinese figure. Um, my guess is that uh, Chinese capacity these days is up to 220 million probably. And then, uh, so this is uh, like an imbalance of 20 million tons. Uh, in terms of North America, the capacity uh, is balanced. European Union, obviously, after, and we're still facing, although we are growing, we are still facing a period of uh, low, low consumption compared with 2008, 2009. So we have an uh, overcapacity of 4 million. But I think we are trying to correct, we've been correcting in five European companies, we've been correcting and, and, and shutting down capacity and, 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 and basically uh, trying to um, adapt our, our production to the market, but there's still an excess of capacity in, in the union. Turkey has also is, has got a, a, a more capacity compared with uh, the domestic, the domestic uh, consumption a bit in the rest of uh, in the rest of uh, Europe and CAS. And on the other, on the other hand, there is obviously an, uh, a lack of capacity or less capacity than, than than consumption in the rest of the world. Okay, international prostitution here, as always, what we, what Frank is trying to do is, uh, is trying to reflect the trends, not the exact price of what is happening today, but the trends in the, in the market. So what we see is that after a lot of volatility in, 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 in up to 2011, it appears that 
in, 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 in thirteen dollars, the price for reinforcing bars while rotten blades is coming back like to a more stable, a bit down trend. But a bit more worrying is what is happening to the to the to the margins. If we see spread. Uh, we see that uh, what, what is the difference between scrap price and, and selling price. A spread from meals is being consistently going down, especially, and, and obviously this is uh, referred to scrap price, so it's making, it's making life more difficult for EF producers. Okay, we know that. We can make a summary and, and, uh, and have a look. I believe that uh, in terms of uh, growth, 2014 and 15 is uh, maintaining a global uh, trend with uh, robust perspectives is in the US. The market there is going to be, in terms of volumes, it's going to be fine, it's going to be good. But fragile, more than fragile, uh, I would say maybe uh, slow or uh, not fragile because I think it's definitely the, the, the uh, European Union is going up and it's consistent but uh, it's slow. The slow recovery in the European Union and well, we still, as, as France says, we still have a, a, a big bit of that to cover to get to the whole Tonnages that we had in the before the crisis, and continued mild growth for China, from China. But also here, we have to see, we have to monitor in the next coming of what is will happen happening there. Now there's some risk in terms of uh, of uh, geopolitical tensions in Ukraine in Middle East. Uh, for in the global economy, but okay, that's something we, we have to monitor, but it's not in our hands. Number three is uh, long-term fundamentals for lungs remain solid. With uh, emerging economies expected to continue to drive lungs demand, especially in Asia. And with China growth softening perceived as uh, a major risk for global consumption growth, because of the, the issue that we've been discussing today here, that is overcapacity. And also, uh, pain, uh, that has to be uh, underlined in this summary is that despite the demand growth, which uh, can, can, uh, is giving obviously a, a, a good opportunity for us, we have to face squeeze margins in terms of basically at this point in time the uh, producers. We have to face the squeeze margins well because of the difference in, 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 in cost. Well, our uh, uh, base producers are benefiting from uh, this advantage in terms of uh, raw material price. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Um, any questions? Yes. Kim, uh, Andy Manster here. Uh, how is it uh, the lack, the absence of Ukraine in the long products market? Is that helping or hurting? How is it affecting the world? Uh, I don't think there's a real absence. I mean, it, it's uh, at some point there are some disruptions in shipments and uh, things like in. in but this is is uh, coming back. I mean, things are stabilizing and uh, there, and um, it's it's uh, it's gradually coming back. So I don't think it's a real absence, or it's not there. No. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I guess okay. it's very, very much informative, so thanks very much.